should be good for a long time, that's true. But you still have to perform. You have to do it and do it and do it. You have to earn the respect of every opponent you're going to play because you know they're going to try to attack you. And so it's up to those players to step up, do the things that we know they can do, the coaches know they can do it, you still have to make plays. You know, I bet playing defense in the, this league is a little different than uh, back when, uh, when Coach Lowry was at the helm. The offenses that you face are just a little bit different, aren't they? Well, they are. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, we, we don't see a, a whole lot of wishbones and all the other things uh, going on. And, you know, Coach Lowry used to try to just run it down the throat of everybody we played. He didn't bother to throw it. I remember one of the greatest lines I ever heard from Coach Lowry. We were at a press conference out in Mesa, Colorado, and somebody said, Coach, you're playing in a semifinal championship game. you got a quarterback that completes 70% of his passes, and you only throw it 17 times a game. Why is that? And he said, poor coaching. Poor coach. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dan, uh, finishing up this uh, this talk about the defense uh, and some of the, the challenges that they're going to face, again, we'll talk about the schedule in, in a little bit, but you made a point last night, and I looked it up today, Ferris State, in the very first game, uh, they hired a guy that used to coach at Texas Tech uh, in the wild kind of spread offense that they run down there. That's going to be interesting game one, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, Ferris State was 1-10 in ten year, last year. Their only win came over Tiffin. And uh, head coach Jeff Pierce of the Bulldogs, uh, you know, he's a, he was an understudy to Otterbein when Coach Otterbein was up there at Ferris uh, with all those championship teams that they had in, in the 90s. And so Pierce has been around for a long time, and he knows what it takes to win in this league. They've had some problems at Ferris, uh, you know, some external things that, that have uh, hampered him a little bit, but you can bet that he's going to be right in the mix, and uh, he's not going to lay down for anybody. In fact, last year, the, uh, Grand Valley only beat him by, That's what, right. three points or a touchdown. So, yeah, you, you can count on them coming down here and giving everything they got, and it ought to be a great game under the lights. Was uh, Dave Dye your coordinator, Andy? Yes, he was. Uh, Dave obviously uh, went on to be the head coach at Hillsdale College. Did you know Craig Blanchard back in those days? No, I didn't. I didn't meet Craig until after, he had, uh, after he'd come back to Hillsdale. And obviously he's the defensive coordinator now and, and has been doing a great job for a long, long time. We're gonna Even take though a, he is a Grand Valley great. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll forgive him this time for that. We're going to take a quick break, uh, and we have got much, much more with the forum. We'll talk about the offensive side of the ball and some of the changes for Hillsdale College on that side. And in a little bit, we'll get the guys' predictions about the 2010 season. It's the Chargers Roundtable, the second annual on WCSR. This is Mark Lemeron, head coach of the Hornet football team, and you're listening to Time Out with Andy Brown on WCSR. Andy Losick from ChargerBlue.com, Dan Beischer, along with uh, Jim Eckert, Brad Monastir. I'm Andy Brown with you in the uh, WCSR studios for our second annual Charger Roundtable. I'm a huge Troy Weatherhead guy, and... Uh, to look back at it now, a couple of years ago, I was all worried when Nicolet graduated that there would be this huge drop-off at quarterback uh, because we'd never seen anybody do what Nicolet did uh, in, in his career. And in Troy Weatherhead, not only has there not been a drop-off, but in some respects he has surpassed what Mark Nicolet was able to do. Nicolet never beat Grand Valley. He never won a playoff game. And this guy, if you spend any time with him at all, is just an incredible leader. His, his uh, fellow teammates would run through a wall for this kid. You know, I think uh, one of the reasons everybody was so concerned the first couple, three weeks when he took over, you remember that uh, he threw to his receivers, the ones he'd practiced with for a, year, for a year on the sidelines, and as a freshman when nobody was playing. So... He threw to uh, the two receivers we'll see a lot this year. And so when they got in the ball game, that's what they did as sophomores. Everybody said, what happened? How come we're not throwing it to the other guys anymore? Well, it wasn't that he was a bad quarterback. He just You're used to seeing certain people. Well, I, I think that uh, Brad can probably give us the numbers, but I think Troy is uh, only he needs 700 and some yards. Uh, before he breaks, uh, is it Nicolay's record or the all-time record? Bill, Bill Skelton. Bill Skelton yeah. was here, uh, and, and a fine quarterback Skelton was, and he put up some big numbers. And uh, it looks like uh, 
you know, Tory Rutherhead's going to surpass what uh, was accomplished by not only Nicolay, but uh, those guys that, that uh, played here before. So that's quite a statement, Andy. And you look at what I, he just he just shreds defenses. He's such a great uh, sense of where where he is on the football field and where his players are on the football field. And and I think that probably comes from the time that he puts in studying uh, uh, tapes and and uh, uh, working with the coaches. And he's got some 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 weapons. I mean, let's face it. Uh, when you look at uh, what Andre Holmes is is scheduled to do this year, if he can stay healthy, obviously uh, you're looking at what Blanchard might be able to do in his senior year and some of the younger receivers as well. I mean, Andy Losick, uh, Andre Holmes is just pure fun to watch, isn't he? Oh, he sure is. And he's one of those guys that I guess you could say benefited a little bit from all the excitement generated last year because now he's getting those All-American uh, preseason honors, and they're very much deservedly so. But when you have all these people coming in, first they're looking at Tom Cordy, and then they're looking at, uh, at Jared Valdir last year, and they say, oh, my gosh, who's this kid on the outside? Uh, yes, he's, he's fun to watch, and anytime you know he can get open, uh, Troy's always got a shot at hitting him. So definitely he's, he's probably one of your marquee attractions coming to Muddy Water Stadium this the, uh, fall. For, for sure. And you look at the three big departures, Jimmy, uh, Jared Veldier, A.J. Kegg, Vinny Panisi. I mean, these are some shoes that need to be filled. And you know what? Every year we have those yep. kind of shoes that have maybe not that size shoe, but they're big shoes that have to be filled. And year after year after year, if you're going to pass the baton, you've got to step up and fill those shoes. And Hillsdale's got the people that are capable of doing that. You know, Dan, I, uh, yeah, go ahead, Andy. Let go me ahead. jump in here. Uh, I think it goes back to a lot of what uh, X said earlier. It's the kind of people that Otter and his staff bring in. It's the kind of character and fortitude that it takes to not only tackle uh, a shot at playing Division II football, but tackle getting a Hillsdale degree. And, you know, the, these kids don't shy away from any challenge. And so when a Nicolay leaves or when a Jared Valdir leaves or when a Panisi leaves, we got these kids that come out of nowhere. And, and that's one of the best things about running ChargerBlue.com is to see these kids recruited. You get glimpses of them in spring ball. And then finally when it's their time to shine, they step up and do it. And so a uh, young man named Joe Glendening that uh, – I started drooling over when he took over for Kevin Grady at East Grand Rapids and then found out that he was coming to Charger land. Um, pretty excited to see him step into that, that role at tailback. A much different type runner than Vinny Panisi, but uh, a man of character and uh, great athletic ability that I, I think should be a lot of fun to watch did, as well. Andy, did you get an assist for recruiting him? No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> we can't, but I was, I was going to put a big star in your book there, buddy. Oh, you know, well, I, I was mighty happy when I, uh, I bugged Nate all, all winter long. Oh, check out this kid. See this kid. Right. Keeping my eye on, on the West Michigan uh, football scene over here. And, and when he said, oh, yeah, Glenn Denning's really excited about Hillsdale, I was, uh, you know, back, you know, when, you know, when they're allowed to talk about that kind of stuff that, you know, that, that Joe had some interest. I was, I was really excited. Well, a couple of you have mentioned that he's a much different runner than Vinny Panisi. In what respect? Well, he's, got, he's that slasher. I, I, you hate to throw around the Schulte word right. because uh, Scott was such an individual, but I saw him break so many ankles on that turf. Um, I mean, I can look back and just see him juking people right out of their, uh, right out of their thigh pads and, and – Glenn Denning's that type of runner, shifty, um, low to the ground, um, with all kinds of moves and, and can find slits and pockets and really explode through those. Vinny Panisi, you know, he, he was the big, uh, you know, mauler back there. And, and, Dan, I think from from the chances that you and I have had to see him play, and he, he did get some opportunities last year, this is a kid that uh, could be a real home home run style threat. Oh, no doubt about it. I watched him in practice uh, last week, and, and I, I was impressed just with the way he was approaching practice and his hustle and his determination. And, uh, and he, did, he had a couple of moves where <laughs> he did exactly what Andy was talking mm -hmm. about, uh, faking people out of their so-called thigh pads. But, uh, <laughs> but, but 
uh, family you know, those kind of moves, 